Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my June wrap-up. And in the month of June I have read 17 books which included 4 mangas and then 13 novels. Before we do jump into today's wrap-up I just wanted to take a second to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Ana Luisa has jewelry that will elevate your everyday. They offer long-lasting tarnish resistant jewelry essentials that you can feel good about wearing every day. And I can definitely confirm this because I have had some of my Ana Luisa rings now for over two years and they are still looking like the day that I got them like they still look so beautiful and 100% of their pieces are strength and humidity tested and the nice thing is that their designs are really affordable starting at just $39 with no luxury markups they offer free and fast US shipping and returns and they have very affordable shipping worldwide it's nice too because all of their products are backed with a two-year warranty and they do extensive testing on their products before they sell them, but if for some reason, if for whatever reason you're not satisfied, they'll send you a replacement or a reimbursement with no questions asked. Ana Luisa jewelry is also crafted with the planet in mind because they offset 100% of their carbon footprint. This time around, Ana Luisa sent me a few jewelry pieces that I am so freaking excited about. One of them is this little ring. It's a ring that just has this little flower on it. The petals are kind of like see-through, like you can see through to your skin. It just makes it look so delicate and so adorable. I also ended up getting another mood ring. This time I got the mood ring with the silver band. I actually do also have the mood ring that has the gold band and I'm just such a huge fan of these mood rings. I don't know why. They make me feel like I'm a teenager like all over again. There's something about mood rings that I just find to be so interesting and so fun. And then I also ended up going with this beautiful gold chain necklace. This necklace might actually be my new favorite necklace that I own because I am not the kind of person who enjoys like really flashy big kind of jewelry. I love something that's a little bit more subtle like this, but I love this necklace. I love the way that it looks. I feel like it adds just a little bit extra to like any outfit that I'm wearing without feeling like I'm trying too hard. And so I've been really loving this chain necklace. I think it's my favorite necklace that I've ever gotten from Ana Luisa. So yeah, go ahead and check out Ana Luisa with the link in my description. And when you use my code GABBYREACH20, you can get 20% off your order, which is so generous and so kind. So thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today video and now let's get into the wrap-up shall we? So the month of June was kind of an all over the place reading month for me because I did have four books that I DNF'd this month but one of the ones I did mention is The Marriage Act by John Mars. This is a book that I I want to say I got at least about a hundred pages into this one before I decided to DNF it. I was actually reading this one for a video that I was working on this month when I decided to DNF this one and I'm so sad about it. I also decided to DNF That Summer Feeling. This is another one that you might have seen because I vlogged this one and talked about why I DNF this one. This one just felt a little bit way too like insta love for me and these characters just felt a little bit like on the verge of like ridiculous to the point where I was just kind of like rolling my eyes and being like yeah okay I don't know about this so I just don't think that this author is for me. I'm also sad about the fact that I DNF'd Meet Me at the Lake but also I mean I think I kind of saw this coming because this is a book that I try to get into. I only got about 50 pages into this one before I ended up DNFing it. This is the same author as Every Summer After, which is a romance book that was like really, really popular either last year or the year before. And that was another one that I think I gave that one two stars. So maybe it's just the fact that this author is just not for me when it comes to romance. And then sadly, I also did end up DNFing The House in the Pines, which this one is a thriller that I was going to be reading this month. It was from one of my Patreon prompt things. I pulled it from one of my Patreon prompts uh, to read a book that was for a book club. I want to say I got about 30% of the way into this on audio before I decided to give up on this one because this is a thriller that it sounded like it would be really interesting but even 30% into it like I could not get into this book. I also feel like there was a lot of um like almost like flashback chapters that were taking up the majority of the story and they just did not feel that thrilling at all like it just kind of felt like a typical kind of like fictional story so I was just really struggling with this one and this is another book that I don't know if this is like a forever DNF but for right now it's a DNF. I also did want to mention that I worked on a few different reading vlogs this month even though I feel like a lot of my reading vlogs and reading plans that I had just did not go to plan for the month of June but the vlogs that I did end up working on included a reading vlog where I read four new thriller arcs and that one was a really fun reading vlog. I also made another video that was reading anticipated books where I read a few of my different anticipated books and I also made a Patreon extended version of that vlog where I also included the book Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. I hosted another round of 
of Screaming Color over on my Patreon, which if you've never heard of Screaming Color, it's basically a 48 hour Patreon exclusive readathon that I host a few times a year. And this round our color was blue. So the main theme of the readathon was just to read any books with blue on the cover within those 48 hours. And so I vlogged that whole experience and just posted that reading vlog recently. So I'll have all of those reading vlogs linked in the description if you missed any of them this month, because I had a lot of fun working on those reading vlogs. I also made a Patreon exclusive video with all of my family this month. All four of us played who's most likely to, and we all had to like answer who in the family is most likely to do certain things. And it was so much fun. And as expected with my family, it was just so chaotic and so much fun. And we were all like calling each other out on different things that we do. And it was just very entertaining. So if you would like to see that, I will also have that link down below. But yeah, without any further ado, let's jump into the wrap up. I'm going to be jumping into the manga first. The first manga that I read this month was actually I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. So in this manga, this young girl is dying and she doesn't want any of her friends or classmates or anybody to know that she's dying because she doesn't want people to start treating her differently. But she does decide to tell this one boy in her class. And so the story is really about the two of them. And you just kind of get to follow their story as they become really close friends. And this honestly, it reminded me so much of like A Walk to Remember by Nicholas Sparks. Like it definitely had those kind of vibes to it. But this manga was really like unexpected. I feel like this manga was really heartbreaking. Like of course I expected it to be heartbreaking, but I still feel like it went places where I wasn't expecting it to go. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I could not have predicted this. And it was just a really beautiful story, mostly about like friendship too. Like I just really loved the way that these two characters like talk to each other and their chemistry was just really cute. And I ended up giving this one four stars. I finally got around to reading Alice in Borderland volume one, which Alice in Borderland is a TV show. They actually made this into a TV show on Netflix and I am a huge fan of the TV show. And so since I realized that the TV show was based on this manga series, I've been wanting to read the manga series. I think if you are a fan of like Squid Game or anything where there's like some kind of games for survival kind of thing, I think you would love this because basically in this story, we're following this young boy who he gets transported into this world that's called Borderland. And they slowly start to find out that in this world, you have to play games in order to obtain a visa. It's interesting because the games are deadly. They're basically like Squid Game, you know, like it's like you play until the death and the games are really interesting and really unique. But it's really cool because all of the different games in Borderland are, they're based off of like a deck of cards. Depending on this, the card suit will determine what kind of game it is, right? So like a diamonds game is gonna be like a brain, like it's gonna involve your brain. And then the difficulty of the game is determined by how high the number is. So like say a game that's like a four or a three will be more simple, whereas like a queen or a king is gonna be like a really difficult game. I also just think this was really surprising in the way that it was just so beautifully written. Like, there were so many quotes talking about like your life and how he's so like directionless at this point in his life, you know, because he's 18 years old. He just doesn't know what he's doing with his life. I was just really impressed by how gorgeously written this book was on top of how fun and action packed the games make this story. So this was five stars for me. I cannot wait to read more from the Alice in Borderland series. I also read My Summer of You. Ooh. This is volume one in a series. I think there's only two or maybe three books out in this series, but this one is this romance between these two boys who are really obsessed with cinema and like film. It's so cute because the boy who's the love interest, he's like one of the most popular and like attractive guys in their high school. There's a lot of times where girls will go and like ask him out and he'll just say like, oh, I'm sorry, I like somebody else. And like nobody knows who he likes. And then one day he finally confesses to his friend that like he has feelings for him. Oh my God, it is so freaking cute. I think if you're a film lover, especially, I think you would really appreciate this because I certainly did like as a fellow film lover like I loved all their discussion about movies and the way they were just so passionate about it I also just thought their romance oh my god it was so freaking cute it was so soft I freaking tabbed the holy heck out of this with just like the cutest oh it was just adorable and I feel like this is genuinely like a manga that was specifically made for me like it's exactly the kind of shit that I look for when I'm reading manga so this is definitely one of my new favorites of all time and then the last manga that I read this month was become you volume one I I was excited about this one because it's the same author as Orange, which is one of my favorite mangas of all time. And this one is really just, um, it's like a contemporary story about this young boy who wants to start a band and he's like really passionate about music. And we just follow him as he's becoming friends with this other boy in the school. This one ended up being around like a three star for me. I wanted to love it a little bit more than I did. I just felt like this one was kind of missing something for me and it just was kind of boring at times. Right, and then the first novel that I ended up reading this month 
month was None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. And I'm so excited. This was the first book that I read for the thriller reading vlog that I was working on this month of reading thriller arcs. So this one actually does not go on sale until August 8th. But I'm so excited to let you know that this was five stars. This was so freaking good. And I highly recommend you check this one out when it comes out on August 8th because, oh, so this one's really interesting because we're following these two women who share the same birthday. Like that's all we really know about them when they, they meet in a restaurant and they're both celebrating their 45th birthday at the same time. And they're like, oh my God, how cool. We're birthday twins. Main protagonist who we're following, Josie, she starts to get obsessed with this other woman named Alex who shares her birthday. And she discovers that this woman, Alex, she has this podcast where she basically like interviews women about their lives and like their struggles and things that they've overcome. And Josie even gets to the point where she asks Alex if she can be a guest on this podcast because she's currently going through a lot of really hard changes in her life and she thinks that her story would be like really unique and interesting. And what's really cool about this book is that in between the chapters of these women like getting to know each other and everything, we get little brief chapters of like a Netflix true crime documentary that was made about these two women. And so you know, like you know the whole time that some shit is gonna go down. You know, like, you know that some shit is gonna go down, but you don't know what it is. And I thought this book was just so entertaining. I really think um this character, Josie, is gonna be a character that, like, sticks with me for such a long time just because she's so, like, unhinged, but in the most, like, interesting way to read about. And I just loved the drama in this book. I thought it was so entertaining. I gave this one five stars. I had such a good time. I feel like this is actually one of my top favorite Lisa Jewell books now. And then the next book that I ended up reading was The Last One by Will Dean. And this was another thriller arc that I read for that same video and this one also goes on sale August 8th but I think this one is currently available in the UK but it publishes a little bit later this year for the US. So the only thing you know about it going into the story is that we're following this woman who she wakes up on a cruise ship with her husband and on that cruise ship the husband is missing and so she goes out onto the main deck trying to look for her husband and she realizes that there's nobody on the goddamn ship. Like she is alone in the middle of the ocean on this cruise ship completely by herself. And that is all that the premise of the book tells you and I'm not even kidding when I say that that happens in the first like 20 pages of this book. I really love and respect when a thriller premise gives away absolutely nothing because it's just so exciting. Like the whole book you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. But I had a really fun time with this one. I ended up giving it four stars. It wasn't like a perfect five-star book for me, but this book was just so unpredictable and so chaotic. And it ended up having something in the story that I just became so invested in. And it's crazy because I can't even tell you anything about it without spoilers. So you'll just have to trust that this one was very entertaining and very unique. And then the next book that I read this month was The Chateau. And this is one that I also read for that thriller reading vlog. This is also one that I read for my friend Savannah's book club. Her book club is called The Lights Out Book Club. And by by the time you're seeing this, we will have already done the live show. So I will have the live show linked down below if you missed it and you want to check it out. This one's another thriller where we're following these four different women who have been really close friends for many years. They're going back to this chateau because one of the grandmas or one of the older women that are in their lives wanted them to come back for a reason. And then when they all go back there, one of the grandmas, Seraphine, is brutally murdered. And then there's like a sinister Instagram account that pops up that has all of these like weird creepy photos of them and it looks like somebody's watching them. They don't know who they can trust. Uh, sadly, um, if you saw the reading vlog that I did reading this book, I think I am going to give this book one star. I think it's a one star for me. And I'm sad about it because I think the premise of this book does sound really cool, but this book did not deliver on any of the things that I wanted it to deliver on. I feel like most of the time, you know, because we do get so many perspectives in this book because we not only get the perspectives of like the four different women, but we also do, if I'm remembering correctly, we get the perspectives of like the elderly women too. Too, like the grandmas and stuff. So there are just way too many point of views in this book and I could not care less about anything that was happening. Oh my gosh, it was so dramatic. I just feel like especially with this book, like not only was it so frustrating because it never really felt like a thriller, like there was just so many dramatic kind of like family exchanges between them, like the women navigating their friendships like later on in their lives and there was so much drama going on with them. Like one of their husbands was like sleeping with one of the other women and like all that kind of stuff that I just, I did not care about any of the drama that was happening. 
happening between them. But I also feel like as far as thrillers go, I feel like I've read something like this like a hundred times before. You know, like I feel like this is bringing nothing new to the table. It's like I've seen it before and I don't know, I just thought the ending just got more and more cheesy and I just wasn't a huge fan of where this one ended up going. It felt very like cheesy movie villain at the end too, which I also just really didn't like. And there was just nothing really redeemable about this for me. Like there was nothing that I could say like, oh yeah, I really liked that about this book. Like I just didn't really care for any of it. So I think it's a one star. I'm so sorry. And then I ended up reading Best Men, which this one is a gay romantic comedy about these two men. You know, they're kind of competing for the attention of their best female friend and she's going to be getting married soon. They're kind of both trying to fight for the role of like the gay best friend in her life. I've seen a lot of people say that this book is a lot like Bridesmaids, which I would kind of agree, but I feel like this book is not nearly as funny or as interesting as Bridesmaids, but it does have that kind of like Bridesmaids energy where they're both kind of competing with each other to be like the bride's best friend, essentially. Something that I really did like about this book is the fact that it takes place in New York. It has really great New York vibes. I also did really love the friendship between our main protagonist, Max, and then this girl, Paige, who's getting married. Like, I thought they had a really cute friendship, but I don't know. This this book was so, um, I just have mixed feelings about it because I didn't really like immediately love the chemistry between Max and this guy. I just felt like they didn't really have any chemistry and so much of the first 50% of this book was just them, you know, fighting for the attention of the bride the whole time, which was funny sometimes, but then not that funny at other times. And the second half of the book is where it really started to come together for me and I really started to adore their romance and like their chemistry. But I also felt like, I don't know, I just never got as attached to these characters as I wanted to. And then I read Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. This is a book that I read for the Patreon extended portion of that reading vlog that I did. And this was a really fun kind of like mystery kind of thriller vibes book that follows this family. They're going to be having like a family reunion at a ski resort. And so the, the snowy vibes in this one are really great. I almost wish that I had read this, you know, in the winter time. Like if I had known there was going to be such a great like snowy atmosphere. I think I would have read it at a different time. But this one was really interesting because of the way that it was written. This protagonist, it's so funny because he will oftentimes like break the fourth wall and like talk directly to the reader, which was just so unique and so interesting. I don't think I've ever read a thriller quite like this one where he does that so often. And it's so funny though, the way that this book is written. He'll be like, if you're looking for like a lot of action, here's all the pages where death happens on page. So he'll be like page two, 210 page this 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 and then if you look in those actual page numbers like that is actually like when the shit happens like it's so funny to me he'll be like yeah it starts to like lose pace a little bit around this part and then here's a huge plot hole that you could drive a truck through but then it really starts to pick up again around page like 250 or whatever he'll be like i don't want to spoil the book but there are no sex scenes in this book just so you know and it's so entertaining because each part of the book is like about a different family member of his so like the book will open with a chapter that's like about his brother and his brother will say something like an offhand comment that's like, oh, it's a lot of money. Protagonist will like say to the reader, he'll be like, as you know, reader, it's $267,000 or something. Like it's just written in a way that is so unique and so freaking funny. I was laughing out loud so many times while I was reading this book. And, and so this is one that I ended up giving four stars. It wasn't a new like favorite five star book just because I found that I wasn't as invested in like the mystery and the plot that was going on in this book, but the writing style itself and the characters was enough for me to love this book so much and still want to give it four stars because of how entertaining of a read it was. And then I ended up reading Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez, which this is a romance that I was really looking forward to because this is actually the second book, I think, in the Part of Your World series because we do follow some of the same characters from Part of Your World, but I think this one can totally be read as a standalone. But this one, oh my gosh, I was obsessed. Um, we follow two characters who work in the medical field and it's so cute because at the beginning of this book, they're both kind of up for the same promotion essentially and Jacob is kind of like this new doctor that just transferred to their you know clinic or whatever it's called recently their hospital and so there's kind of like this tension between them right away because she's kind of like um this is my job and like who do you think you are just coming up in here and trying to take my job from me but then she kind of quickly realizes that Jacob is an absolute angel little sweetheart of a human and he has a lot of anxiety that he's dealing with and he doesn't like confrontation and this story was just oh my god it was so freaking soft like I adore Jacob so much. He's like one of my new favorite male love interests that I've ever 
read in a book and I think it's mostly because of the fact that he is so endearing like he is so freaking sweet he's so thoughtful and because he has anxiety and kind of like social anxieties I just found him to be so relatable throughout this story and I love the way that Brianna like communicates with him and kind of like helps him through his anxiety sometimes oh my god it was just so freaking sweet and I ended up giving this one four stars and okay the only reason like literally the only reason why this book was not a five star for me was because some of their miscommunication issues towards the second half of this book just really started to bother me and not only only that but Brianna as a character just started to get really frustrating to me at the end of this book with like her trust issues. She would just have a lot of trust issues when it came to Jacob and I know it was because of like her past relationships and her past experiences but I'm like literally Jacob is the biggest cinnamon roll and I thought he deserved better than how she was treating him at times and it was just really I don't know the second half of this book was a little bit of a struggle for me but these characters oh my god it's hard for me to you know rate this book this way because it's like I loved this one I think I might have loved this story even more than part of your world even though I rated part of your world higher I don't know how to explain myself but I just I love this one so much like this is one that I definitely could see myself rereading in the future and then I ended up reading The Whispers by Ashley Audrain which this is from the same author as The Push and so this is one that I was really excited to read because of how much I loved The Push and this one is kind of a contemporary mystery like very subtle on the thriller vibes kind of book much like The Push to be honest and in this story we're following from the perspective of four different different women who are either they're either all mothers or some of them want to be mothers and and so the whole premise of this book you know is about how this one woman Whitney in their group she has like a barbecue and invites like the whole neighborhood over and then her kid like disobeys her in front of everyone and then she kind of like goes off on him and just explodes with fury and the whole neighborhood is kind of like oh shit like something's going on with that woman kind of thing and then a little bit later after that the kid falls out of a window on the second story and is in the hospital and people are starting to say that they think that she had something to do with it or like there was something there was trouble at home like it could not have been an accident and so it's a lot of speculation about like what actually happened to this boy and what's going on and it's also kind of at the same time a real look at how we critique mothers and how we judge mothers based on those moments of like frustration with their kids. I think this book, much like The Push, it is so beautifully written and so thought-provoking and just a really brutally honest look at motherhood and the fears that I think anybody would have with becoming a mother or becoming a parent and the way that we as a society like really critically judge women who are mothers. Whereas like with men, we're just not as hard on men when it comes to being fathers but with women we like have a certain expectation of them when it comes to women being mothers. This author just has a really gorgeous way of writing and I really do love the writing in this. I ended up giving this one four stars though overall and that was mostly because I think because there were like four different perspectives we were following I found it a little bit hard to get invested in all four of the storylines like I definitely found myself more invested in some than others and so during those others that I wasn't as invested in I just kind of like lost interest just a little bit in the story. I really feel like for me this book could have benefited more if we only had like one or maybe two perspectives instead of four because I just feel like it was a little bit too much for me at times. But I also can't deny just how gorgeously written this book was and how thought-provoking and interesting. Like this author is really somebody that I want to read everything that she ever comes out with because I love her writing. All right and then the next book that I read this month was Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert and this one is a young adult romance by this author. This is the first young adult romance that I've read by her and I think it's the first young adult romance that she's ever put out but this is from the same author as the Get a Life Chloe Brown you know like the Brown sisters books which I really enjoyed and this one I felt like this one was cute you know it was fine it was about like a three star for me and in this story we're following this young girl who is a content creator and then the love interest in this book is this guy who is an athlete and he also has OCD I felt like the OCD representation in this book was actually really well done I think for me personally I enjoyed the first first half of this book a little bit more than the second half but even after the first half like I wasn't obsessed with it I was just like oh this is cute I really do love the way that Talia Hibbert writes the banter between these two I just thought it was really fun and they definitely have that like academic rivalry kind of trope happening in this book I also loved the atmosphere of like the woods and the outdoors even though I wish there was a little bit more of that like I feel like the atmosphere could have been improved upon just a little bit in this book but I just also I don't know I wasn't a huge fan of the second 
second half of this book, there was a lot of like that miscommunication and the third act conflict just wasn't my favorite with this one. I just feel like this one was cute, but I definitely prefer Talia Hibbert's writing when it comes to her adult romance books. Like I really do love her adult romance books, but for young adult, I don't know. Then the next book that I read this month was The Drowning Woman by Robin Harding, which this is one that I was really looking forward to. I feel like Robin Harding is one of those thriller authors where I always get excited to like read every single thriller that she comes out with, but then almost all of the times I feel like her books end up being around a three star for me. Like I don't really think I've ever absolutely loved any books from Robin Harding, but the premise of her books are always so interesting, so I always want to read them. And with this one, I kind of felt the same, you know, because in this story, we're following this woman who is homeless and she's kind of like on the run. She's fleeing this past that we don't really know the full details of what happened to her. And I thought the beginning of this book was so strong. It was so interesting. In the first like 30%, I was really gripped. But yeah, right at the beginning of this book, uh, this homeless woman, she saves this other woman who's drowning. And then the woman is like, why would you do that? Like she was clearly like trying to kill herself. And so that's what it looks like. And then she gets sucked into the world of this woman who was trying to kill herself and all of her like marital problems and all of her like dark shit with her husband. And I feel like once again, with another Robin Harding book, I feel like I really loved the beginning. I was really intrigued by it and really invested in the first half of the book. And then by the second half of the book, I just started to get so bored. I was ready for things to wrap up. And I also feel like, I don't know, this one in particular feels like a story that I've read before. Like this one felt to me like it wasn't really bringing anything new to the table either. And I'm just really surprised because this one actually has some of the best ratings I've seen compared to a lot of the other Robin Hardings. But this is also one of my least favorite, I think, because I think this one was about like a two and a half stars for me. It just wasn't very memorable. And then I ended up reading The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth, which this is my book troupe pick for the month of June. So this story is about this married couple who, you know, they live really close to this cliffside where it's really common for people to go to this cliff and like jump off the cliff and end their lives there. And this guy, Gabe, who's like the husband, he's been known for like being able to talk people down off the side of the cliff and like he's really good with people. But then one day, um, our protagonist, she like looks out the window and Gabe's talking to this woman that looks like she's gonna jump. And then when she looks back out the window, it looks like his hands are extended, like he might have fucking pushed her, you know? And the woman is down there, she's gone, she's dead. Then we follow like what ends up happening afterwards and how to her, she seems like it's like her husband is lying to the police. Like she, he's not really telling them the full story of like what happened. And, and then we also find out that her husband actually knew this woman. And so this book was really intriguing at the beginning. I was very intrigued by the story and I was like, okay, what the heck is going on? The book was also very weird because we get the perspective of the woman who jumped after her life is over, which was a perspective that was very odd and like I don't know if I needed that. There was like a lot of different point of views going on and they kind of felt very similar to me at times, so I was getting the two women like mixed up a lot in this book. And then I also just feel like this book went in a direction that I was like, what the fuck is this? Like it was just so weird. And I also was not a huge fan of the ending of this book. Like the ending really bothered me because I would have been perfectly fine giving this book around like three to like three and a half stars. It just wasn't very memorable, but it wasn't terrible. But then the ending of this book, oh my gosh, it just frustrated me so much and these characters were doing things that absolutely made no sense to me. So now it's a two star. I think it's about a two star for me. I'm gonna be doing the live show for this book with Savannah and Aaron on July 2nd. So I will have the link for the live show saved down below if you wanna hear more of my thoughts on this one. But wow, what a freaking bummer this was. I also ended up reading The Spare Room by Andrea Bartz. And this is another thriller that I was so freaking excited about. I thought this one sounded really interesting because we're following a woman who she gets gets into this really like toxic fight with like her husband or her boyfriend, I can't remember. She ends up moving and staying with her other friend and her husband and her friend, like her female friend is a writer and she writes these books that are like about sex and she just becomes really like invested in their lives and then she becomes sexually involved with her friend and her husband. And then she finds out that the woman who was sexually involved with both of them before her has gone missing or like is currently missing. And this book, oh my gosh, it's started off like so interesting and so much fun but I also think that this book thinks that it's like a lot more juicy and like hot than it actually is like this book never really went there for me like I just thought it would be a lot more intense and interesting I also just feel like this is another one of those thrillers where I feel like I've read this before like I feel like I've seen this before it just wasn't very surprising and the second half of the book really fell apart for me like I was kind of invested and thought the first like 30 to 50 percent was fun but I also feel like this book never really 
really feels like a thriller until more than like 70% of the way through the book. Like my friend Ashley said, she said, I think this thriller would be good for fans of like Taryn Fisher or like Geneva Rose. And I definitely think that this author is like part of that group. Like I would definitely recommend all of those kinds of books together because this just didn't work for me. This ended up being a two star. And then I ended up reading Death in Her Hands. And this is one that I don't even know how to describe this book. It's like a really weird genre bending kind of horror book. And we're basically just following this elderly woman who she finds this note in the woods that says her name was Magda. Nobody will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me, but here is her dead body. And there's like no dead body. But the whole story is just basically about this elderly woman and how she becomes so obsessed with the idea of like imagining Magda's life and like who was Magda and like tr trying to solve the mystery of her death is essentially like what the whole book is about. And this book was definitely odd. This book was strange. It's one of the most strange books that I've ever read. And I honestly feel like a lot of it probably went right over my head. I don't know how I feel about this one. It's like the writing at some parts was so gorgeous. And I love the way that the writing would talk about aging and like being scared of getting older and being elderly. And you know, like there was some writing that I just thought was so gorgeous. Like when she says, there is nothing more heartbreaking than a squandered opportunity, a mischance. I knew about stuff like that because I'd been young once. So many dreams had been dashed, but I dashed them myself. Kind of just talking about, you know, like the futures that we create for ourselves. Like there was such beautiful writing in this book at some parts and it was so thought provoking and interesting. But then at other times I thought the plot itself was kind of boring and it was very slow. This is definitely like one of the most like slow burn, just kind of character study books. And I just don't know if I was exactly in the mood for that when I read this. But I also think, you know, like this entire story is only seven chapters long and the chapters are very long and especially like chapter six, I just thought it started to drag so much. Like I was just so ready for the book to move on and just be done with it. And so I ended up giving this one three stars. I have very mixed feelings on this one. I loved some things and I didn't care for other things. And then the last book that I read this month was The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead. And this is a book that I was really excited about because Ashley Winstead is an author of, you know, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and she writes thrillers and she writes romances. I actually did end up DNFing her first romance book, Fool Me Once. So this is my second attempt at reading a romance with her. And I didn't realize that this book was going to be following the sister from the girl in the first book, Fool Me Once. So it's kind of a sequel, I guess, in a way, but it's also like not because you can just read this book as a standalone, I think. But this one is another one that it ended up being okay. Um, I feel mixed about this one too, because I loved so many things about this book. Like the fact that our protagonist, you know, she's like a Virgo and she's very like organized and very reserved. And I just related a lot to her personality in this book. You know, like I just connected with her as a protagonist. I also love the fake dating trope, you know, that's like one of my favorite tropes. And so this book definitely has that as well. But I think uh, the thing that I didn't like about this book so much is the fact that <laughs> The love interest is this guy who's like a politician, you know, like he's gonna be the one running for governor in Texas. And I just didn't really love him as a love interest. Like he just wasn't that interesting to me. And I just didn't really ever feel the real chemistry between them. And I also, I know this is definitely like a me thing and like a me problem, but I didn't love how much politics were involved in the story. Like I just thought it was kind of boring after a while. And I know that that's like definitely on me because hello, of course this book is gonna be about politics when the love interest is a literal politician and the whole thing is that they're going to be like fake dating throughout his campaign to like make his campaign look better but I don't know like maybe it's just me right now but I just don't really want to be reading about politicians and politics so much in my romance books it just kind of like bogged the story down because they'd be talking about like budgets for like the schools and like how do you feel about this thing and you know it was just kind of boring like it just really made the story feel a little bit boring to me at times but I did love the protagonist I love the relationship she had with her sister I just thought they were so freaking cute. But overall, this one was about a three star for me. It's not super memorable, but Ashley Winstead is an author that I just really admire so much and I look up to. And I feel like if I were to ever be an author, I would want to be doing what she's doing, you know, with like publishing thrillers and romances and just doing it all. So yeah, those are all of the books that I read in the month of June. I feel like this reading month was very just like all over the place for me because I had a few new favorites. But for the most part, I feel like I read a lot of duds this month too, which makes me sad. I'm hoping for a better reading month in July 
especially because I have so much going on in the month of July, like Summerween, hello, just around the corner now. Also, just a reminder to go and check out Ana Luisa. You can use the link down in my description and you can get 20% off when you use my code GabbyReach20. I highly recommend their jewelry because it's absolutely stunning. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out. You'll have to let me know how many books did you read in the month of June? What was the best book that you read in the month of June? And if you found any new favorites, I would love to know. And thank you so, so much for watching as always. And I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.